Hillsborough Castle is a royal residence in Northern Ireland since about 1925 and is also the home of the Secretary of State. But more importantly, it is also the place where visitors can come and see great works of art, enjoy 97 acres of gardens and come and spend the day with their families and friends. At the moment, um, the team and I, uh, we are currently doing a high level clean and that basically means that we have our scaffolds out and within the rooms we are working from the very tops of the ceilings right down to the carpets and the wooden floors and everything in between and we're removing all of the dust and we're giving all of the objects a clean to make sure that we're prepared for visitors coming in in April. So yes, there's, a, there's about 10 state rooms in the castle that we're, we're cleaning currently. Uh, they range from the state entrance and the ante room through to the, the large dining room which can accommodate up to 24 people around the grand dining room table. The red room with about 78 paintings and um, some uh, really lovely pieces of fabric on the curtains and the chandeliers as well. We have um, the drawing room really at quite a relaxed domestic space um, uh, full of Irish artwork and through to Lady Grey's with a lot of political sketches and portraits. And finally, of course, we're in the, the grand throne room with this beautiful green damask or silk wallpaper, um, uh, beautiful large chandeliers and of course the chairs of state and the applique banner behind me um, it sort of is the, sort of the centre or the, the heart of the castle. So depending on each, which, whichever room that we're in, the rooms can take at varying times. Mostly, the, the longest time will take about four to five days. That would be the drawing room, because there's so much works of art, whether it's the paintings or whether it's the objects themselves. Um, we've got to be careful to make sure that we take our time, that we are moving the objects out of the room, cleaning them independently, and then bringing them back in again, whilst we've other, also worked on the, art, the artwork and the, the architectural features in the room. However, there's other rooms that, although they're a lot smaller, could take the same amount of time. Uh, the red room in particular, it has 78 paintings in it. And that's an awful lot of paintings to, to, to work through. Um, and it's also quite a tall room as well. It's got a very high ceiling, which means it's a larger scaffold to be able to get up and to get into the rooms and to get into the, the cornicing of the rooms to clean as well. So this is a, the, the tool chest that has everything that we require for a high level clean. Um, it's got everything from our uh, brushes that we're using on the delicate surfaces. So we have a number of different types. You can see here we have what's called a, a pony hair brush and it's quite a soft finish on it. So for example, if you're working on a picture frame that has uh, a layer of gilding, which is a very thin layer of gold, you can use this to brush the, the surface and make sure that you're not damaging the surface at the same time. Um, other areas that we, we, other brushes that we would use, we have what's called a hog's hair brush. So it's a little bit more stiff bristles and it allows you to get into more um, harder to access areas, particularly on woodwork, um, um, which might have a bit of a, a decorative feature to it and it allows you to, to lift the dust out. And, and importantly as well, while we're doing this, we're, um, we have gloves on and we're also having, a, we have a hoover in our other hands so they can suck the dust off immediately. And we have various, you can see here, we have different sizes of brushes, quite wide ones, um, and sort of with different finishes as well and different types of heads on them. So, you know, there, there's a different variety for whenever we're cleaning um, to make the process a little bit quicker. Um, we also have much, much larger brushes, which as you can see in here, sort of for larger flat surfaces, we can use that to, to clean. This is something we do each year and we start early January and we work through to roughly mid-February. It's a time when the castle's a little bit quieter and allows us to get into the rooms a little bit deeper and to clean them. And as I say, we've been doing this for the past seven or eight years. Um, it's an annual clean um, and then throughout the rest of the year, what we do is we actually do a cyclical cleaning across um, other areas, other, other materials, whether we focus one week on um, carpets, the next week we might focus on brass and silver, the next. In February we have a number of tours that are going to be um, associated to the, the high level cleaning process and I'm going to be leading people through the castle, giving them a little bit of a, um, an idea of how we look after the objects, whether it's silverware, whether it's the chandeliers, talking about how the conditions, the right conditions are required to look after the objects as well. Um, and really excitingly as well, we have a, a horolo horological conservator who looks after clocks. He's going to be um, over for the week from England and he's going to take a couple of them apart and service them so people will get the opportunity to, to learn from, um, from him as well.